I feel like I'm going to cause a lot of discourse with my very unpopular opinions. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I am Monet and you're watching Life is Monet. I've not done a book tag on my channel in a while. I did the mid-year freakout tag earlier, but I don't remember doing... The last tag that I did before that was probably the booktube newbie tag. I clearly don't do enough tags on my channel, and so today we're gonna fix that. Today we're going to be doing the in or out book tag, which has... 26 questions and I'm excited because I feel like it's going to give you guys a chance to really get to know me I really like the questions and I will put a link down below uh, to the video that I first seen do this and also the original person who created the tag and their name is Rick McDonald if you guys find this tag to be very interesting then I challenge you guys to do it it seems very fun so let's get started I have the prompts in front of me we're gonna go through 26 prompts which are basically just things that are very bookish and that we see often in the book community and decide if they're in or out by my standards and if it's different for you let me know down in the comment section if you disagree with me and why so prompt number one is reading the last page first who who does that do people do that I've never, that never crossed my mind. I'm flabbergasted. I don't have words. Like, what would possess you? That's out. Did I say that? That's out. Two is enemies to lovers. I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a diehard fan. It doesn't have to be in my books. I'm going to say in because I don't dislike it. I'm not always excited when I see it, especially when it's not done right. But I could do a good enemies to lovers. I prefer grumpy sunshine, but... But I know that that's like less popular than enemies to lovers. The girl is eat up their enemies to lovers. Prop number three is dream sequences. That is in, okay? I love me a good dream sequence. I know that people hate it in books, especially because authors will place a dream sequence right where it's the most inconvenient. Stuff will pop off and it'll be like pedal to the metal action. And all of a sudden on the next page, we have a random dream sequence and it's like, uh, what the hell? Like get back to the action, but when I see a dream sequence, especially when it's used like that as a break from the action, I'm very excited for the dream sequence because nine times out of ten, the dream sequence kind of foreshadows what's going to happen in the end of the book. It's a fun break. And also when I'm done with it and it's time to get back to the action, I am more hyped, like more excited to finish. But I know people who have said that they will skip that chapter, but not me, girl. I want to be like, oh. Let me settle down. Let me get comfortable because stuff is really about to happen. So definitely in. Or is going to be love triangles. That is out. Pick him or pick him. But can we get on with our damn day? I don't have time. Pick both. Pick them both. Five is going to be cracked spines. I'm going to say that's out. I do not intentionally try to crack my spines. I'm definitely not the softest with my books. But... I will say that like if I'm shopping for a book, especially for used secondhand books that and I see too many cracks in the spine, it's a, it's a turn off. I'm not going to purchase the book. So that is definitely out. Prop number six is the back to my small town trope. I love that. I like when we have a character that has been away from home for a really long time and they come back and like there's old things that like were never resolved and like tensions and things that were left unsaid. Especially when something drastic happened that made the character leave home and now we're trying to backtrack and piece things together to figure out like what went wrong. I'm usually intrigued. It's not my favorite trope but those books I generally enjoy so that's definitely in. The prop for number seven is monsters are regular people absolutely not make my fae fae make my vampires vampires make my gods gods i prefer my gods not to be anthropomorphic hello that was a big word so yeah don't don't humanize my creatures my monsters let my monsters be monsters i do not need to see that there is love and humanity and all of it out that is out eight is no paragraph breaks I feel like that would piss me off. That's out. That's out. Like, break it up. Maybe this is a little compulsive or OCD-ish, but I need breaks. Especially when I help someone with a school assignment and they type and there's like 15 sentences in a paragraph and the paragraph starts to run off and start talking about different things. I'm like, if you don't press 
if you don't press that button to break this up, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose it. Prop number nine is multi-generational sagas. I'm going to say yes. Initially, when I read a book and we jump an entire generation um, and years into the future, I find myself a little annoyed, especially when I've become attached to the past characters. But by the end, I am usually satisfied with the story. I know that authors do that because they want you to focus on the entire overall plot and not the characters. Yes, the characters drive the story, but I know that authors sometimes do that to like take away from you only focusing on this one single characters or maybe two characters arc and their journey and like look at the overall message and pay attention to what I'm telling you. And I used to hate that. I used to hate it so much until N.K. Jemisin. If you've read N.K. Jemisin's books, you know that she will give you characters that you are attached to or you absolutely hate. But in all of her books, you will always have new additional POVs. A lot of the times it is generational in the series that I've read from her and there are really big time jumps. N.K. Jemisin is an author that will hit you over the head with the plot and you just gotta, you gotta go with it because what she's trying to say is worth it if you pay attention. That's in. Prop 10 is rereading. That is in. I do not mind a reread. I actually really enjoy rereads when I do get around to them. I don't do them often but I definitely see the appeal in rereading a book. I usually just reread my ultimate favorites and I have a really good time every time. A friend of mine rereads books literally as soon as they finish them and it doesn't even have to be a favorite. They just have that need to process everything like maybe everything didn't settle or like really kick in the first time around so they reread it to really like get the most out of the book. I don't see myself doing that but I do understand why people do that so I'm gonna say that's in. 11 is artificial intelligence AI. Okay I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I am not a conspiracy theorist but I guess I am. I guess I am in this matter. I truly believe that one day when AIs are sentient, they're going to take over the world. And so AI is my horror dystopia. Like, that's horror to me. And I know it doesn't qualify as horror. If you've seen the 100, that season where like that AI alley went haywire, that was horror to me, okay? I was scared, I was shaking in my boots. One of the reasons why I really enjoyed the Scythe series by Neil Schusterman as well, because there is an AI in there that is also sentient. There was a moment in there where I was just like, is this thing going off the rails? Horror. And I also really enjoyed Illuminae for that same purpose because this artificial intelligence on this spaceship is trying to kill its passengers, especially when the AI thinks that it's doing it for a good reason. Like they're so sentient and like almost human that they feel like they have to do a little evil for the sake of humanity. Like that's horror, but I eat it up. I eat it up. That's me. That is my horror dystopia. So that's in. Prompt number 12 is going to be drop caps, which happens at the beginning of a chapter. I actually really like them. You see them a lot in really whimsical, fantastical uh, stories, and I really enjoy it. 14 is plot points that only converge at the end. That is in. That is in. I don't need to see everything. I don't need it all to, I don't need to be handheld through my books. Now that also could be a result of me reading a lot of high fantasy, especially adult fantasy books, and a lot of N.K. Jemisin because these books often don't hold your hand. You just have to sit there and wait for it all to make sense. But that moment where you're just like, I love it. That's definitely it. I love to sit there and just be like, nah, I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming. And that happens a lot in the Last Magician series by Lisa Maxwell, especially at the end. You're just kind of sitting there following like 14 different people doing completely different things. And you're like, what does one have to do with the other? Yeah, that happens in there as well as the Scythe series as well. Like almost all the series that I love does that. So I'm going to definitely say that that's in. I have, I'm a fan of that. 15 is Detailed Magic Systems. I'm gonna say out. I'm gonna say out. I want to be told enough to be able to follow the story, but I don't need to be able to reenact it in real life. Like, the only way that I can really think of this in terms would be like Yu Gi Oh! or like Pokemon because you watch it on the show and then you literally have to really understand it to play it in real life. And I do play Yu Gi Oh! I can't see me enjoying that over and over. Like, 
I'm not going to attempt to do this in real life. I'm not going to attempt to try this at home. And honestly, I tend to get a little bored. Like if you're knocking me over the head with excessive details about how the magic works, it takes away from the story for me and it kind of becomes like a duty or a chore. I would rather you just tell me enough so that I can just go. And the more that I see it, the more that I will understand it. Prompt 16 is classic fantasy races. I'm going to say that that's in, I enjoy elves and dwarves and fae and yeah, I'm, I'm into them. Especially when they are true to their depiction and you actually go through the effort of making them not human. I don't want to read from they characters that act human like you might as well have just made them human. 17 is unreliable narrators. I'm going to say that that is out. I don't hate it but I don't seek it out. If I could avoid it I would prefer to. In all of the books that I have read that makes the main character unreliable does nothing to add to the story for me because I immediately can tell when a main character is not reliable. And I stopped really paying attention to everything they say in the book because I feel like once I know that the character is unreliable, I'm just cruising through the book until I get to the point where it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, I knew that was coming because I know that the character isn't reliable. So that's out. The only time I would say it's in is if like, I can't tell that the main character is unreliable. But like even in movies when we have unreliable main characters, I can immediately tell. So it's not as fun for me. So out. 18 is evil protagonist. Yes, that is in. I eat up an evil protagonist. Anti-heroes. Honestly, I feel like anti-heroes is a cop out. Make them evil. Make them evil. I'm here for it. 19 is the chosen one. I'm going to say no. I would much rather read from an anti-hero or uh, evil protagonist. I don't really enjoy the chosen one trope because it's like essentially all the same when you follow like their archetype is, oh, I'm the savior of the world and no, that can't be me. I'm not prepared. Yes, you are. Just believe in the fates and believe in the heart of the cards and it's just, mm, okay. Yeah, that's out for me. 20 is when the protagonist dies. That's in. That is definitely in. I know that it makes other people very, very angry. But if you throw something like that in a book, I would be like, you know what? That's bold. That's how you know the author does not care about you. Definitely a masochist. <laughs> I love to be hurt. I love to be in pain. So that's definitely in. I wish more authors would utilize that. I feel like so many authors don't utilize that and they end up being stuck writing multiple books in a series. <clears throat> you guys know who I'm talking about? And like the fans are, it's really the fans fault because they keep begging and crying and ranting about give us another book, give us another book. If it was me, I would kill him. I would kill him. But I'm alright. But I'm alright. They're dead. They're dead. Cop my new book. Read that. 21 is really long chapters. I tolerate this a lot, especially again reading high fantasy and adult fantasy books, but it's really an out for me. If I had a preference, I would not choose long chapters. No. And it sucks because I recently read Theft of Swords and I loved it. I freaking love those books. And those chapters are like 30, 40, 50 pages long. And if I had a choice, I would say no. But again, it doesn't take away from the story for me. It's just like, okay, I know that I can't be like, oh, I'm just going to finish this chapter and then I'll go do what I need to do. It's like, no, I might as well just put my bookmark there, come back later because trying to finish a chapter could take a good hour. Prompt 22 is French flaps. That is out. That makes me violently angry. I don't know who decided that was a good idea, but um, I will not purchase a book if it does that. I, it makes me violently upset. 23 is Deckled Edges. This is in. I feel like I'm totally um, in the minority here because people love French flaps and I don't. People hate Deckled Edges, but I don't dislike it. I feel like if it matches the aesthetics of the book, it definitely goes. It's definitely a vibe. 24 is signed copies by the author. 
that is in. I love a signed copy by an author, especially if it's personalized. And I like signed copies in paperbacks as well. I know that people feel like if you're going to get a signed copy, it definitely must be a hardback. But it doesn't have to be for me. I will take a signed paperback too. So that is definitely in. 25 is Dog Earring Pages. Out. Out. Find something to put there. If not, look at the bottom of the page. Stop on an even number. Stop on something that you can remember. If you're stopping on page 179, flip to 180 and just remember it. Just remember it. I do not do the dogging of the ears. The final one, prompt 26, is chapter titles instead of numbers. That is going to be out. I don't really care for chapter titles. I never even read the title of a chapter. Like if I flip it, and it has a title, I totally skip it. Like, it's crazy because when I'm reading a book that has a chapter title, I will know. I'm on chapter 24. I'm on chapter 26. I actively keep track of that. But if I flip it and it's called The Green Mountains, I don't even read it. It's out. I don't know why that's necessary. Don't try to come up with fancy titles. Just put it in the book. Just write the book. Just write the words in the actual chapter. I feel like it's a waste of time to sit there and come up with catchy phrases for the beginning of a chapter because I don't really care. You gotta put that effort into the book. We have reached the end of the in or out book tag. I'm sure that I have shocked quite a few of you guys. If you were shocked, let me know down below. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.